Welcome back to Roots and Arrows Homestead. My name is Victoria, but most everyone who knows me calls me Tori. And if you're new here, I just want you to know that this is my first time doing a video like this. Uh, this is going to be a cook and clean with me. And on this night, I am making pita pizzas for my husband and myself. Uh, a lot of times when the kids will eat something like chicken nuggets or hot dogs or whatever kids generally like to eat, we will make these uh, pizza, pita pizzas for ourselves. Now, I will say that sometimes they will eat this as well if I just make like a plain cheese one, they'll eat it. But they generally do not like all of the toppings that my husband and I enjoy. So I tend to make them something different and then we'll put them to bed, especially during the summer um, because it stays bright outside for so long. I will cook our dinner after I put them to bed. And then my husband and I will sit down and eat somewhere between 7.30 and 8.30 and just relax um, for the evening. We, we watch the sun go down over Yes, I am married and my husband is British. I'm American. We live in the UK. We have um, four kids. Our oldest boy is four and a half. Our oldest girl just turned three in February. And we have twins, a boy and a girl who will be two at the end of June, here in just a couple of days, actually. Yeah, I know that we're not perfect, but I need this night for the... Do you hear the crispiness? I love that. That's what you want. When you pull pita bread out of the oven, you want it to sound a little crispy so that the sauce doesn't soak in and make it just gross. <laughs> oh, the ingredients. The ingredients in tomato sauce, if you ever, or pizza sauce, if you ever buy pizza sauce, make sure you look at the ingredients because I saw some pizza sauces that had like shocking ingredients, stuff that I can't even pronounce. And um, one of them, I looked it up and I'm pretty sure it was basically sand. And so I was like, really turned off by that but um anyway so yeah we just bake the pita pizzas a little bit i mean the pita bread we bake the pita bread so it gets a little crispy we put some sauce on it chicken that was a rotisserie chicken that my mother-in-law had brought and um black olives and we load it up with bell peppers that's our favorite thing to do is load it up with bell peppers and uh yeah and so that was our dinner this night pita pizzas and it was delicious. This is definitely a staple in our house. This is actually what I made for the kids the next day and myself really. Um, I used a little bit of this jar of sauce, not the whole thing, and we made pizza pockets. Now this is something that I have not really made before. This is my first time making this one and um, I will say it was a hit with three out of four of my kids. Um, our daughter is quite the picky eater. She was not a huge fan of this meal, but my son ate three. So <laughs> um, he had about three and each of the babies had one each. Um, plus some, I think they had mac and cheese or something on the side, but it's about a three out of four. So three out of four, I'll take those odds. I will probably be making this again. And you see the two there that look like sauce, they look like sauces on the top. Um, those are the, that's my indicator. That's how I indicate that those two do not have pepperoni. Those are cheese only. Oh, these look so delicious. When I pulled them out of the oven, I was ready to just sink my teeth into one and they smelled so good. You came. I was breathless. So this is the next day and I am making ham sandwiches for everybody. We were playing outside in the water and the kids were getting wet and didn't really want to come inside. We didn't really want them to come inside because they were so wet. So I made these quick little ham sandwiches and both of my older two can just grab this and eat it. And then my husband was outside with the babies and helped them eat theirs as well. But um, one thing I did want to talk about, 
while we're doing this voiceover is the fact that while I do have this YouTube channel, I also have a blog. And on my blog, I have recently decided to start uh, posting things that kind of line up with my videos. And so I thought that uh, cook and clean with me type video would be a good time to talk about one of the topics that I write about over on the blog. Um, I think that was kind of a mouthful, but there you go. So uh, recently, within the last couple of days, I have posted on my blog three reasons why being a homemaker doesn't really come naturally to most millennials. And this, I was excited to write this post, honestly. I had read, um, I had read a blog post about it, and then like a week later I saw a YouTube video about it. And so I kind of felt like I was being nudged to talk about it, if that makes sense. You took the pain away. Uh, anybody ever eat their sandwich or whatever it is, like while you're cooking? Yeah, I do that. I did that. <laughs> um, I did wash my hands. I don't think I showed it because I didn't want to like move the camera around so many times, but I definitely did wash my hands. No, no worrying about that. Colby Calais, I think, obsessed with this album, the whole album. I am just, I am listening to it almost every day. Anyway. I have ADHD, y'all. If this is your first video, I apologize because this might not be the best first video um, for you <laughs> to watch on my channel. I feel like I'm talking to myself and when I'm alone and talking to myself, did I just admit to talking to myself? Anyway, my mind goes haywire. I can jump from like one subject to a different subject. I, I can't even follow my train of thought sometimes. It's like, anyway, okay. So back to what I was saying about the blog. Recently, I posted about why homemaking doesn't come naturally to most millennials. And I am a millennial. Um, according to pewresearch.org, which basically I just Googled it. Um, anyone born between 1981 and 1996 is considered a millennial. So right now, if you are 23 up to 38, you are considered a millennial. That was as of 2019. I don't think that has changed, but if it has, then just let me know and I will stand corrected. Um, anyway, that being said, I did talk about three reasons why I think millenni millennials especially have trouble when it comes to homemaking. And the first reason that I listed was because we didn't really have a great role model. And um, if you look at the TV mothers, so to speak, my personal one was Lorelai Gilmore. I loved and still do the Gilmore girls, but Lorelai Gilmore, she worked outside of the home. She was not the greatest at homemaking or keeping things clean and tidy. And, um, I'm not saying that you have to be like the perfect, the picture of perfection when it comes to homemaking, but when I think about TV shows and the TV shows that I watched and things along those lines, there was not one like mom who worked in or outside of the home and stayed on top of all of the housework and stuff. You know, it wasn't like normal, quote unquote normal. How normal can you get when you're on a TV show? But it wasn't normal. And so we didn't really have the best role models of how to juggle keeping a clean house and maintaining a career outside the home. Now I'm not knocking anyone. Okay. My parents, both of them worked outside the home. They still do. They're looking at retirement, but they haven't retired yet. And, um, you know, the way I grew up was, yeah, you go to work every morning, you come home in the evening, you cook dinner, you do homework and you go to bed and then you wake up the next day and you do it all again. And so generally the weekends, you know, were for cleaning the house, you know, especially if you do something fun on Saturday, or if you go out of the house on Saturday, then you only have Sunday to get everything in order. And so that's generally the way it worked for us. Now what's going on with the food here, but this is, um, I, I had a bunch of hamburger meat that was about like two days away from its expiration date or whatever, you know, the, the use by date. 
And so what you're watching here is um, me. You're watching me cook up that meat and I made a taco dip meal. I made a hot dog chili. I made um, an extra little bit of meat that I'm gonna put in a spaghetti sauce. Uh, you're gonna see here in a few minutes. Life was dull until you came. I was breathless when we first met. Couldn't keep my hands away. I was speechless when we first met. Yeah, you took the pain away. Didn't mind my scars, mend my broken heart. Life was dull until you came. binge watching Amy Darley on YouTube. I don't know if you watch her videos or not, but if you don't, you definitely should. Um, Amy Darley on YouTube, bless her heart. I absolutely love her videos. She is um, down in the South of America. I'm trying to think, I think she, they live in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, I wanna say. And just watching some of her videos reminds me so much of home and I miss it. <laughs> I miss home. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did grow up in South Carolina, not too far from Greenville, South Carolina. And um, yes, I miss it very, very much. <laughs> uh, plus Amy Darley, she, from what I can tell in her videos, loves Diet Coke, loves Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and yeah, she and I, I feel like we would be friends in real life if I knew her in real life. I can't believe that I am yours and you are mine. You took the pain away, didn't Anyway, she has two kiddos and I love watching her videos about sending her kiddos off to school. It makes me feel a little bit better um, about my walk in life right now because I have wanted to be a homeschool mom for so long. Oh, little Logan. Bye bye. I wanted to be a homeschool mom for so long, basically since I was pregnant with my um, oldest boy, but I have to tell you, it's not looking like it's going to happen, and that's partly because we do have four kiddos under five years old, partly because I do have this YouTube and blog that I'm trying to run as a business, and also partly because living here in the UK, um, homeschooling is not as big I guess is the word, as it is in America. Now, I'm not saying that it's not going to change. I may homeschool when they get a little bit older, but as for right now, we just have so much going on. We're probably going to send all of the kids to school or preschool and just go from there because just, you know, take it one year at a time is what I'm thinking. And so I'm trying to get myself okay with sending them off to school. And in doing so, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of moms who like make the lunch bags or do the school runs or whatever. And that's how I came back to Amy Darley's channel actually was through that search because I've watched Amy Darley for years, probably, I would say probably since 2018 or so. And I kind of stopped watching there for a while, but recently definitely I've been binge watching. And so that's what I was watching while I was doing the cooking and the cleaning on this day. Um, but yeah, that's all for this day. So let's jump right into the next day. Everyone needs a show. All right, guys, it is the next day. And um, I know that in the last little clip, I was talking about Amy Darley. And I just want to take a moment to reach out to you. Um, and I know that my audience might not all be Christian. You might not all pray. But in some way, shape, or form, we all care about someone else. And so I just want you to take a moment and think about Amy Darley and her family because um, I saw, I think it was on her stories maybe, uh, that they recently lost, I believe it was her stepfather. And her mom was having a pretty hard time getting used to life without him. And um, Well, I personally don't know what a step relationship is like in my own life, you know, my, my parents have been married my whole life and um, my grandparents were married until one of my grandfathers or both my grandfathers passed away and neither of my grandmothers remarried. So I don't really have any personal experience with a step anything relationship, 
But I do know that losing someone, however close you may be, losing someone, especially family, is never an easy thing. Um, so anyway, I just, I, I've talked about Amy Darley in this video, which is kind of funny to me because it was, it, it, I, I filmed this and I've edited this over the course of about a week. And so when I, um, when I edited the first part of this and was talking about Amy Darley and her channel and how much she has inspired me, um, I did not realize what her family was actually going through. I saw it on, I believe it was this day, actually, the day that I'm editing right now. Um, this was last Thursday, I believe it was, and I saw it um, on her page. So anyway, just please have Amy Darley in your thoughts and prayers. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's jump into the video for this day. All right, so as you can see, I've been uh, cleaning up a little bit, and this is what I'm listening to today. It's Colby Kelly again, uh, Gypsy Heart. I am loving this album. No joke, I listen to it almost every day. Um, it is Tuesday, June 27th right now when I'm editing this, and I do want to say I'm actually really loving Kelly Clarkson's new album as well. If you haven't listened to it yet, head over to Spotify and give it a listen. Kelly Clarkson's new album, I believe it's called Chemistry. I have listened to the entire album twice over or more, and it is a great album too. That being said, today on this day, I am making uh, taco burritos. As you saw earlier in this video, I do make taco stuff is what my mom calls it. So this is my son's favorite plate. He loves this Spider-Man plate, or we have another one that is a Buzz Lightyear plate. He really likes that. This is my daughter's favorite plate, uh, the Disney princesses. She loves eating on that plate almost every day. Um, and so that is the taco burritos that they had for dinner that night. On this night, I am making spaghetti. Um, and this spaghetti will be my husband's dinner, my dinner, and probably our lunch tomorrow. I believe we had it the next day as well. This is the meat that I have prepped uh, a day or two ago. Previously in this video, you saw me prep that meat. That was the extra meat and uh, I had saved it in the fridge for this purpose. I knew it would be good in the fridge for like three to four days or something. And this is the last of it as well. Uh, besides what's left of the taco meat, this is the last of that meat. So I'm using that to make spaghetti sauce. getting stuff on my shirt. I cannot get away from it. I would love to have an apron, but I haven't had one for years. Actually, I haven't had one since we moved here to the UK. So maybe one day I will get me a new apron, but for now I just have stains on all of my clothes from cooking or eating or the kids getting it on me or something. Um, I don't think I have one t-shirt that doesn't have a stain on it, but that's just mom life, I guess, right? putting in the rest in the fridge and having it as cold coffee the next day which is what this is actually I've made that in the morning and put it in the fridge to have as you could tell it was about 4 30 <laughs> but um, yes I do love cold coffee and I especially love when it tastes kind of like the ones you get at Starbucks it's really good Now 
Now, I do also want to mention that I did post a blog post about what makes a homestead a homestead. And I wanted to talk about that because, oh, look, that's my favorite spaghetti. I think I've shown that before, but that's really good spaghetti. My kids love it too. Anywho, <laughs> I want to talk about what makes a homestead a homestead. Now, I've heard many, many different opinions on this, but I, oh, I got a new broom. Y'all, that makes me so happy. I was so happy to get, finally have a big full-size broom. My mom got me one back in March, and I found this one at B&Q, um, but I have not had a full-size broom for years before my mom got me that full-size broom um, back in March. So it feels really good to have a full-size broom again. Um, if you if you live in the UK, you know, like you know. But if you don't live in the UK, I will insert some clips here of the brooms that we've been using. So this is what we typically use. We have a red one like this, uh, just a little dustpan with a tiny broom handle thing. Um, this, we also had one that looked very similar to this uh, for a couple of months, couple of years there. But yeah, the full size broom is a game changer. And this is one that I grew up with. So I was very, very happy to have a full size broom again. So this is another meal I'm making. Um, I wanted to cook up this chicken before its date came up on me. And so since I was already in the kitchen and already making all this food, I was like, why not go ahead and cook the chicken? And so I did end up cooking the chicken and I put it in the oven and really this just cooled off and went straight into the fridge. And then we used it for um, chicken and cheese sandwiches. We used it for pita pizzas. Um, in fact, we just finished it off last night. I cooked this, I think it was Thursday night. Last night was Monday night and it was its fourth day and cooked chicken is good for four to five days in the fridge. So I uh, cooked that up and we finished it off last night with our pita pizzas. I think it's time for me to get a new strainer. What do you guys think? After three years, I think it's time to get a new strainer. Does anyone else ever add butter to their noodles? Just out of curiosity, I'm pretty sure my mom used to do this. I have faint memories of buttered noodles, plain buttered noodles. Not just for my dinner, but for my mom's dinner too. She would sit down and just plain buttered noodles and loved it. Um, Anyway, does anyone else do that? I love adding a little bit of butter to my noodles. I feel like it adds flavor to them. It makes them, um, well, I guess taste better. I've always added butter to my noodles and they've always turned out fine. Also, I like to add butter to my noodles because sometimes you see the chicken there. That looks lovely. Sometimes I will cut up that chicken, put it on top of those buttered noodles and then drizzle a little bit of that juicy olive oil type situation it's got going on in the pan. And that makes a really good dinner too. This was our first rain, y'all. We've only had maybe two rains this entire summer. So it was wonderful. Oh, it smelled so good. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps my channel grow. I can't believe we are over 115 subscribers now. It's so exciting to see that number go higher and higher. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this community. And I will see you in the next one.